Welcome to day two of our hashtag let's learn watercolor challenge for March. Um, we are doing florals this week. So I chose to do um, a hibiscus flower. This is the drawing outline I've given you in the downloads. Um, you can find that on my website on the hibiscus page. If you're watching on Facebook, um, make sure to go to that link. And then I just found this on Google. I really liked this style of hibiscus flower. I think we can create some really pretty looks with the techniques we learned yesterday. So this is gonna be kind of like my reference picture and kind of like my inspiration. Um, obviously it's not the exact same thing that we're working with now, but it gives me the idea of what I'm looking for. If you want to create different colors for yours, just go to Google, find the colors that you like, and you can print it out and use it as inspiration to see how the colors work together. All right, let's dive in. So I want to start with this flower and I'm kind of looking at this one here and I notice right off the bat um, the deep red in the center and then it kind of petals out to um, the light, light pink. So, and I'm noticing um, it also has some orangish tint in it. So we are going to mix some colors and I want to mix some pink. with some orange. Can you see my orange? Oh, there it is. Oh gosh, that was really orange. Let's grab some more pink. And I'm splashy again today. You can test your color. Okay. I'm gonna tear off a piece of my paper towel here up this paint that I just dribbled. Okay, so I've got a, a nice soft pinky orange. So I'm gonna start with, and again, same as yesterday, we're gonna do one petal at a time. I've already traced my outline. I'm gonna just start with kind of lining this with a pinky orange. And then doing the same technique as yesterday, and I'm just gonna fill it in with water only. And we'll lift that paint out, and it's okay if some stays down in the base because it's darker in the base. But I want this to be so, so, ever so soft. I'm just gonna kind of push some of that to the back there. And since this is such a rich, bright color, I think while it's wet, I'm gonna mix up like a purpley pink color maybe. I already had some purple there, so I just kind of mixed it together. Uh, no, it's kind of more orangey, so I think it'd be better to do like a magenta red. Oh my lanta, do you guys see all my splashing I'm doing? Good heavens, settle down. <sighs> all right, so then I'm just gonna drop this bright color in the base and let it naturally blend in while it's drying. Okay, let that dry. Um, let's go ahead and move on to another section. Let's do this petal. Just add more water to make it a softer look. Again, I'm gonna pull that water out. And I'm just pushing the rest of this color to the side, to the base there. And then again, come in with that darker magenta-y color. I just mixed pink and red together, really. 
and let that be at the base. I think I need more. The more concentrated, the better on the base, just because it'll emphasize that look and let it dry. Okay, so we learned yesterday that when you're going with this look, you cannot, cannot mix the two, like you can't overlap them. So you have to let them dry and then come back to it. So I'm gonna move to a completely different section, work on something completely different, and we'll come back to it. So let's start with maybe some leaves. Again, if you saw yesterday, I had two different cups. I'm gonna keep my reddish colors in this one and green in this one, that way they don't muddy my water together. So let's start with green. I'm gonna use a good sap green. And I'm just gonna line most of my stems with this sap green on the left-hand side. Yeah, we'll start with that. And then I want to come in and just kind of blend some of it out. Kind of the same technique, I'm just kind of lifting some of it, but also blending it to the right. I'm gonna use a smaller brush for some of these stems. And then I want to take sap green. Probably switched my brush too soon. It's better to mix colors with a bigger brush, but that's okay. With a little bit of this. I think this one's called Green Verdian Hue, I think, and it'll just give us a nice, beautiful, rich green. So again, I'm gonna line it on the side. The idea here is to create some depth into the stems. You kind of do that a little bit by layering it. You want some variety in your color too. So while it's wet, I'm just gonna drop in some more of that sap green. We'll come back to those later and add some shading for dimension, but for now that gives us some good colors. Okay, um, I want to use, I'm kind of running with this here. Let's do, here we go. I just added a little bit more sap green to that deeper green that we had. I'm gonna come in and do my petals. And I think what will be fun, whoops, I mixed my things already, will be to do, just drop in some of that green and let it go how it wants to. I just kind of dropped it at the base and I'm gonna let it play however it wants to go. I'm gonna come in and do the same thing down here. I'm starting with just some diluted, really diluted. I just barely tap my brush in the water. So I didn't quite rinse it off, but it's got, whoa. That's what happens when you touch water. <laughs> that was cool, did you see that? That's what happens when you touch a wet area next to a dry area and then you get that spot wet, it will just naturally kind of boom out, which is so cool. And sometimes you just kind of have to let it do its thing. I think I'm gonna run with that and let it just play. That was kind of cool. But that's why you have to let one area dry next to the other. Okay, so what I was trying to do, <laughs> show you up here. I just got it a little wet and then I was gonna do kind of the same idea but drop in some of this green. I just want it to be so, so light. And then we can kind of keep that same idea going if we wanted. And drop in some of that darker green at the base. And I'm just gonna use the very, very tip of my brush and I'm gonna follow this stem with that dark green 
down. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one, just follow it. There we go. Okay. We'll do the same thing on this side. I like this loose look, but sometimes you have I have too much water on it, so I'm just gonna kind of dry some of that up, but allow that light green color to still come in. And then that deep green and just drop that in too. Let it go how it wants. For those of you that are more control freaks like me, <laughs> I like to have control over my paintings. This is a fun exercise to kind of loosen that up. Okay, so Let's give this green a minute. We'll come back to some other spots on it. I want to come in and just soften up this edge. I'm gonna use just water only, again, in my pink cup. And I'm just gonna kind of soften up. Oh gosh, I used green on that brush. Okay, I'm gonna soften up where this line ends here. And kind of just blend that out just a little bit. I have a fairly dry brush, so that way if it pulls some texture, that's okay. It'll kind of create some lines in some spots. But we're just gonna kind of soften up that harsh line by just pulling it out. It's not a soaking wet brush, just a slightly wet brush. And it'll pull some texture into it as we soften those lines. go okay so since these are for the most part pretty dry okay I'm using the same big fat brush for both green and pink so just if you're doing that just be careful not to make a mess of your stuff um, rinse it really good in both cups before you do it um, and use since I'm going to pink now I'm, I ended rinsing with my pink okay here's my orangey pink When you come up next to these green, be careful, make sure the green is dry. And be careful not to overwork that green to not pull it into your leaf. Okay, and then same thing, we're gonna dry it and kind of lift it out, pushing that color to the base. And then come in and Add your strong color to the bottom. Let that dry and then we'll come in with a dry brush and fan it out again. But since I'm kind of on the opposite side, I can do it to the other petal too. Some of my green mixed into my pinkish orange. Okay, on this part, I am going to elect to a kind of avoid this area where the yellow is. It, if you get some in there, it's no big deal because you'll naturally see some of the pink behind it. But I'm gonna just kind of avoid that area just a little bit and just kind of work around it. Okay, and then I just got it a little bit more wet so I can pick some of this color out. Okay, 
We'll come back to that last petal there in a minute. I'm going to do some more greenery here. Again, I'm trying to work around the parts that are wet to not blend things in too much. I'm kind of playing around with different ways to do this. So these ones I did kind of a more loose approach to them. These ones I'm kind of coming in with very little water on my brush and just doing a very light green wash on it. This is the style I prefer, but I wanted to play with different textures and different styles and different ways to do it. Um, the screen leaf is kind of cool, but I don't particularly care how it has like one big strong green side. So I'm just gonna kind of, again with my dryer brush, just kind of blend in some of that. It was still kind of wet, so the water that was already in there, I'm just kind of going to blend out that little bloom that I had. And then I'm just fixing the shape on this one. Okay, there's those for now. And let's go ahead and add, I'm gonna do this one as a very, very light green. I want the ones that are coming over the top of it, like this one and this one, to be darker than the one that's behind it. Okay, so now that that base layer is done, I want to come in on some of those ones that I just added that light green color to, and I'm gonna do that line and down the center, and then I'm gonna use the very, very tip of my brush. I hope you guys can see this. I don't wanna block you. <clears throat> I'm gonna use the very, very tip of my brush and just kind of pull it out to create some of this, these lines. You might get a thinner brush if you need to. I'm having a hard time with my angle. I'm going to blend this in just a little bit, just because I don't like the way it came out. And I'm gonna try it again. So again, remember the technique I taught you yesterday. If you need to lift out color, all you do is go in and add more water. Don't drip everywhere. And then dry your brush. Lift it out. And then I can start over. But I actually kind of like the way that came together. When I did that last one, it kind of left that line in the center. But I'm going to just come back to that one in a minute. I didn't quite like the way that came together. I needed a smaller brush. My detail brush is what I'm going to use going forward for these lines because I did not like the way it came together. There we go. So I've got a fairly dry brush. I didn't even dip it in the water. I just got a little bit of that darker green and mixed it in with the water that I already have on my palette. And that's what I want. And I'm making very, very soft lines on these leaves that follow the curves and follow the leaf. 
Ooh, I like that one. That came together better. I'm gonna do the same thing. Again, a fairly dry brush. And this is where we can add some shading to our stems as well. Again, on that left side, I'm just adding a darker color. All right. Well, this is a leaf too. I missed that one completely. I'm gonna come back in and fill that in with a lighter green. Let's come back and do this last petal. My green really mixed into that. I'm gonna mix another one over here. This is, I think, why it's important to kind of clean up your palette sometimes. <laughs> I always just use the same paint over and over again, but I do think it's important to clean up your palette often. So that way this kind of stuff doesn't happen. I've got my, or I should just organize it, right? I should have like my greens and blues and yellows over here and my like reds and blues, or excuse me, my reds and pinks and purples over here, but whatever. Okay, orange. This orange really makes a huge, I mean, it's way more prominent than the pink. So I'm just... Trying to make that same color I once had over here, and I think I'm pretty close. It's just more concentrated. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna just make sure I have lots of water to kind of dilute it down and come in and do it again. All right, real good. And send all that paint back to the center and pick up the excess while you're at it. And I'm gonna drop in that darker pigment. while it's wet. There we go. Okay. Now, since these ones are dry, we can come back in and use our almost dry brush to kind of just work out this edge. I'm going to turn this.
This one is a little kind of more pink, so I'm just going to add some of that orangey yellow or orangey pink to it. It just kind of has a more purple hue. Same with this one. I'm just going to add a little bit more of that. And this will also add some more like dimension to it. And then this one I kind of did a little too dark towards the end, so I'm just lifting out some of that color and kind of pulling this down to kind of lighten up that back end. There we go. We'll let that be for just a minute. <clears throat> Come back to it in just a second. And we'll finish that off. Let's move to this flower. We haven't touched this one yet. So I don't have a reference picture of the side of a flower. However, I'm assuming that the same rule still apply. It's going to be darker towards the base and it's going to come lighter towards the top. So I'm just going to try to follow that guideline. And I'm looking at this drawing guide because I didn't trace everything. And because I just wanted to kind of get a feel for where things are and what it is that I'm doing. So there's like a little bud here, which I didn't catch before. And then this is going to be very dark. That's this part right here. And then there's another little one that comes out on the side. That's going to be darker. And then it'll gradually fade out. But there is some green that comes up on the stem of it. So that's good to know. I'm glad I looked. And then I'm just going to follow the petals, the lines. This part's fun because it kind of folds over, so I'll show you how to do that too. So just pay attention to the drawing guide. There's way more detail in there. Um, if you don't trace everything like I don't, um, then it's, it's sometimes hard to see it when you're not looking at the whole detail. But these ones I've drawn just with a pen and ink, or ink on paper, and so there's sometimes more detail in those than what I translate to my tracing. Okay. So now with that said, we're just going to kind of dilute it out and just kind of, I just dipped my brush in the water and lightly dried it and I'm just kind of pulling in some of the color from these edges. And allowing it to just be soft. So on this part, you want it to be darker on the base, still show kind of where that petal is on the top with the pink, but you want that, that top part to be almost white and it'll show kind of how it folds. Same back here. This is just a cute little petal in the back and we're just going to show that off. So since I want... this part down here to be darker, I'm going to come in with a dark pinky red at the base while this is still wet. I'm just going to come in and make those V shapes on the bottom where I want those. And then kind of line a little bit of where these lines are with it too. There we go. Okay. And just kind of blend some of that in. Not a lot, just enough for it to be soft. We'll come back in and add some more detail to it once it all dries, but the key to this is just being patient with it. Let it do its thing, but also know when to stop working it. Okay. <clears throat> and again, when that all dries, we'll do the green on the bottom. You don't want to mix it. Don't, don't mess it too much. 
with this dark concentrated color, I'm going to come in and do these little berries. Again, we'll add shading to those in a minute, but I just want to kind of keep that. Visually, your eye sees things in threes. So I've got this bright pink color here, so I'm going to add this bright pink color here. I'm not sure if that was intended to be yellow or whatever. I don't know because, I mean, I think of these as yellow, but you guys can do it however you want. But visually, my eye works in threes, and I want that color to come together in that top corner. And I may as well just do these little dots, that pink color too. All right. Where do we want to add some detail? Let's come in and with our detail brush and do this leaf one more time. This is just adding value, adding more layers. I'm going to come back to that one that I thought I messed up earlier and just softly add some of those lines to the tip of my brush just to add some details. I'm kind of working some of these here too. Another layer. Here we go. And here too. Now with this leaf, I want to just line it on the base of it with the darker color. That'll create that shadow on it. we go okay that's pretty much dry so I'm gonna come in same idea on this darker green and then use your lighter green to kind of fill it in to add visual dimension And then I don't want my stem to be all wonky, like it make it look completely different color. So I'm going to come back in with this richer green. And make it match. Because I don't think I used the same colors when I did it. Because I didn't realize it had like a bud to it. There we go. And I'm just softening some of those lines so that way it looks more blended. 
Okay, let's come back to some of the details on this brush here. I wanna make sure, I don't remember what paint brushes I've used on which colors now, so I just wanna make sure it's all rinsed. But a slightly wet brush on this, and I'm just gonna pull out some of that color and just create those lines. There we go. Okay. So then I just took the tip of my brush, got some more concentrated color, and I'm just going to kind of line it back up. And here's the fun part too. On some of these spots where it curves, I want you guys to be able to see this. I don't want my hand to block the way. On some of these spots where it curves, I want you to take the tip of your brush and just create sections of three lines. I don't know why three is the magic number, but that's where it looks like it folds. So on the parts where it just kind of curves a little bit, add those three lines and it'll look more papery. You can add some smaller lines kind of in between. This is the same technique I use when I do hollyhocks. I just add those three really fine lines to make it look softer, I don't know, more papery. Papery, the word I'm looking for, I don't even know. But that's what I do, is the three lines. And then kind of pull some of those other lines up. All right, that's coming together nicely. I like it. Okay, um, I kind of want to emphasize this dark center. Whoops, wrong color. I just mixed it in with my green. Okay, so I want to emphasize this dark. I'm gonna add a little, this color I think is called mauve and it's a warmer purple. So I'm just gonna add a teeny bit of that to it too. And I'm gonna come in and Line the sides of my petals and fill in this area down here. And then again, just kind of pull some of that out. But I want this to be, I've got something in my paints. I think it's orange. <laughs> I almost think it needs a little bit of like a Payne's gray, just a little bit. Yeah, that's a good dark. There we go. I think that emphasizes that center. And then I'm just gonna kind of blend it out so that way it's not like a starfish in the center of it, if that makes sense. And then take this color up the sides of the petals And then this one you can also pull up those lines too. There we go. <clears throat> I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna probably do one more layer to kind of emphasize that center, but I really like that. Um, since we've got that color mixed, I'm gonna come do the same thing over here. And this is where we're gonna add a little bit more details now that the rest of it's dry. And we're gonna pull some of this darker color up. And then those, again, that same three lines is how you make that 
wavy feel. Just working in small, thin lines. There we go. Okay. All right. Um, this is still wet. I want to, with my detail brush, I want to use my, I think, yeah, let's use the dark green. We'll see how it goes. Maybe not. I'm trying to decide what color I want to do those little sprigs. I don't, I'm not really feeling the green on it. Let's just try a paint gray, maybe. I'm going to come back over it with the soft green because it looks a little weird with just gray coming right out of the green. So I'm just going to kind of add another layer to it. I don't know how I feel about it, y'all. I'm trying to decide. While I'm here, while I'm trying to decide, I'm just gonna do this one. There we go. All right. <clears throat> now, I think this is going to be work. It's fun. So you can see here the value difference inside this center is very dark. And I'm lacking that here. So that's what I'm going to do. This is why I said it had to come in layers because you don't always get it on the first attempt. You have to let it dry, and let it come back in. But I'm gonna come in with some Payne's Gray and I might just mix it here with this purple that I already had. So that way it has that purplishy hue to it. Um, and I'm just gonna kinda come in and emphasize that that's the base of the flower, the inside of it. Again, take it up the, the petals if you need to. This will also help you line to distinguish one petal from the other, which ones are on top, 
which one's up below. But adding that value makes a huge difference in the realism and the dimension of your painting. You just slowly get darker and darker. There we go. Okay. I want to add, I might use this golden yellow. I'm just gonna come in and kind of just stipple this guy right here. I'll let it dry and I'll come back to it. And I'm gonna add some yellow to this too. All right, we did not do this darker color here, so that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, I feel like this flower is a little too limey. Is that the word I'm looking for? I don't know, that's what I wanted to say. It has too much lines in it for my liking, so I'm just gonna soften it up by just going over it with just water, just a little teeny bit. And don't do it too much, otherwise you'll overwork it and you'll lose the delicateness of it, but I just wanna kinda soften it a touch. There we go. All right, I think we're about done. As always, my favorite part is this, the fine liners. Um, you can choose to add if you want. I think it looks beautiful without it, but it is just my favorite technique. I do it on almost all of my paintings. And this one, I think I'm gonna do a little bit more loosely. But I just like to come in with a liner. And I'm not necessarily tracing it per se. I'm just gonna add the 
the idea of where the line should be. Like, is this part of the, the paint doesn't exactly meet it, and like there's other parts where the paint kind of goes over it, which is what makes it fun. This part I didn't intentionally mean to do, but if you draw it like this, it looks like the petal is kind of folding over. So most of the detail in this yellow sprig in the middle is, um, for me, added with the fine liner. That's the way I enjoy doing that. All right, best part, sign it where you feel is appropriate. And we're done. Thanks for joining me, guys. Tomorrow we are going to be doing poppies. This will be our drawing outline for it. So I'll see you then. I want to see your paintings. Everybody post them. Show me what you did. And tell me something you learned. Thanks, guys. We'll see you.